So let's see where we left off. We, we were studying the balance sheet of this Bank A, I think that's what I called it. And we said, OK, on the asset side, had some government bonds, had some AAA corporate bonds, some commercial mortgages. And then this is the thing that I really wanted to highlight, is that you all, it also had $4 billion of residential collateralized debt obligations. And I explained a little bit about what those are. And I have several videos where I explained that in more detail and how they probably led, or most definitely led, to the housing bubble. And then we have a little bit of cash on top of that. On the liability side, the bank just owns a lot of money to people. If this was were a commercial bank, kind of you know your Bank of Americas or uh, your Chases of the world, then one of the liabilities here would have also been the uh, the deposits of the people who kept keep their money at the bank. But we're not going to assume that this could be just kind of any bank. Actually, this could this could be any type of financial institution. Frankly, it doesn't have to be a bank. This could be the balance sheet of a of a hedge fund or a private equity firm or pretty much any type of financial institution. But anyway, back to where we were in the example. We said, and we learned it in the first video, and we learned it in the balance sheet video, that if you take your assets and you subtract out your liabilities, so you take what you have, you subtract out what you owe, you're left with what you're really worth, and that's called your equity. And if you're a publicly traded company, actually, you don't even have to be publicly traded, but if you're a corporation, that's called your shareholders' equity. And what does that mean? Well, that means the people who own a stake in the company, or the shareholders, they share this piece. And just to may hit the point home, I think this is an important one, because I, I feel like people kind of talk past this. There's two notions. There's your book value of equity, and that's the value of the equity that comes out of your balance sheet. So if you assume that everything, all of these numbers are accurate, and we're going to think a lot about what it means to have an accurate number here, and you assume that all of these numbers are accurate, then the number that pops out on the equity side, that is the book value of your equity. And just as an example, I said, well, let's say that Bank A is a public company. It has 500 million shares. And so that means that if you take its $3 billion of equity, divide by 500 million shares, that means that there is $6 of book equity per share. So that means if, these, if all of these numbers are correct, then the stock of that company is worth $6 per share. Exactly. Exactly $6 per share. And you're saying, wait, wait, Sal, that doesn't make sense. We all know that the stock market is a wild ride, especially banking stocks. They swing left and right and, and yeah, up and down. And you know, how can you tell me that you know, just by looking at a balance sheet, you can give an exact amount for what its, its equity value is? And that is an important distinction. So let me, let me scroll down a little bit. Maybe I'll erase this. Actually, yeah, let, me, let me clear this out, because I think it's a distraction. You might just want to watch the video on mortgage-backed securities and collateralized debt obligations if you need a refresher there. So what, what does it mean when, a, when a, you know, I'm telling you right now that a, a, you, know, you can look at a company's balance sheet, and if you believe what they say, you can actually calculate a book value per share. So, so why, do stock, why do stocks fluctuate wildly left and right? Well, it, it's interesting. It actually tells you a lot about what the market thinks about a company's balance sheet. So I mean, let me, let me fill this in. This was 26 billion of assets. And then I had, what, 23 billion of liabilities, 23 billion. And then we got, that's how we got equity of 3 billion and book equity per share, or the, or, or the book value per share of $6. Now let's say we, you know, we go onto Yahoo Finance and we type in the ticker symbol for this bank, you know, Bank A, whatever we want to call it. And let's say that its market price is, I don't know, it is twelve dollars per share. Twelve dollars per share. So what is happening here? The 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 book value is six dollars, but the market is saying, no, 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 we are willing to pay twelve dollars per share for one of those shares. And just to make a point here, when you look up a share price in the stock market, or even better, when you buy a stock on the stock market, that money is not going to the company. The company initially raises money by selling shares, and that's often done with an initial public offering. They will sell some shares directly to the market, and that money goes directly to the company. Or they might do it in an offering, and we'll talk more about that later. But 99% of the time, when you buy a share, it is not going to the company. It is going to the previous person who held that share. And that's why it's called a secondary market. It's not going to the company. So it's just a bunch of people trading the share price. And the only reason why that share price really fundamentally matters to the company is if the company were to raise money at a future date. So if let's say the share price today is $12, let's say I bought a share for $12 a share today, that means I bought it from, maybe I bought it from you. I didn't buy it from the company. But that at least tells the company that 
if it were to go to if it needed money, if it needed to raise money, it could sell sell shares probably at something close to twelve dollars a share. It also tells someone who wanted to buy out the whole company, so if they wanted to take over the company, that maybe if they offered some type of a premium to twelve dollars a share, they could buy out all of the stock. Well that's that's not the topic for this and actually the more I think about it I really should do videos on all of these concepts. But anyway, so the market is 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 giving a twelve dollar per share value. What does that mean? Who the person who's paying twelve dollars a share is assuming that this is understated. The book value is understated. And so if the book value is understated, that means that either the assets are understated or the liabilities are overstated. Most times the liabilities are are pretty easy to to get a handle on. Sometimes pension liabilities and or some type of litigation liabilities that's hard to get a grasp on. But most time you can look at a balance sheet and you say, okay, this is the money they owe. That's not too hard to value. What is often very interesting to value are the assets on a balance sheet. So, if if you know with this balance sheet. You would say six dollars per share, but the market's willing to say twelve. They would say, you know what? The company either these assets are somehow being undervalued, or the company might have some assets that somehow are not captured on the balance sheet, right? Some maybe they're intangible assets, or there's some type of earning power that in some way is not captured uh, captured here. I think when I originally did the videos on balance sheet, I actually talked about you know you can't you can't um, you can't quantify charisma and good looks, and so that's maybe why you know I have more assets than than you know you, my balance sheet might predict. Well, this notion is the same thing, but on the company level, maybe if this was if this were Goldman Sachs's balance sheet, maybe its book value per share is six dollars, but the market's willing to pay twelve dollars for it because it's Goldman Sachs. That's the corporate equivalent of charisma and good looks. They say you know just by their brand, they are able to make more money than everyone else. They're able to do more with whatever assets we give them. So I'm willing to pay a premium to their book value. And you know whether or not that's true, that's that's a tough case. I think that argument can very easily be made with a company like Coca-Cola, where it does have a very powerful brand, where that brand and that formula, that secret formula, really are the value of the firm, and they probably aren't captured on their balance sheet. With a bank, I'd be a little more skeptical of paying a significant uh, multiple of this. Right here, what what multiple are we paying? If this is the market value, so let's say this is the mar- the stock price, or the market stock price. Market stock price. I'd I'd be skeptical of of paying two times the book value, but it's actually not hard to find a lot of companies that are trading at far more than two times the book value. So that's what it means. That's what the the market is essentially saying. If they're paying twelve dollars a share for something that essentially has a book value of six dollars per share, they're saying, well, or or maybe one of these assets are worth more. Maybe they had, you know, on the books, there's like a a property here in in I don't know Manhattan that they bought. Fifty years ago, that they have it on the books for fifty cents, but maybe the shareholders say, "Oh no, that's really worth a million dollars or something." I don't know. And another way to think about it is, is if the market is paying twelve million dollars per share, what's the market cap of the company? And the market cap of the company is really the, what's the market's guess of what the shareholders' equity is? So the market cap, you take twelve dollars per share, multiply it by five hundred million shares. So twelve times five hundred million, or let's say point five billion. And you get a six billion dollar market cap. So if the if the equity is trading or if the stock is trading that day at twelve dollars per share, that says that the market or at least the the people on the margin trading that stock that day. And I'll do another whole another set of videos on what that means and how prices are set. But that means that they think that this equity isn't three billion; that it's actually worth. Six billion dollars, and I told you for all the reasons. Maybe the brand is worth a lot, or they have some secret formula, or one of these assets somehow is understated. So that's fine. That's the situation where the market price is above the book value. But what's the situation where, let's say that on that day of trading, the share price is at three dollars per share. Three dollars per share. Well, if we say three times 0.5 billion, that means that the market says that. This company's market cap is 1.5 billion. Or another way of viewing it is that this is the market's guess, or you could call it the market value of the equity. This is the market's guess of the value of this company's equity. So the market says, okay, I don't care that you know Bank A says that they have three billion dollars, that their assets minus liabilities are three billion. We don't buy it. We actually think that this is only worth 1.5 billion dollars, and it's probably because. They think that one of these things on the left-hand side of the balance sheet, one of these assets, 
are worth less than what the bank says they're worth. I mean, it could be that you know one of these liabilities are worth more. Maybe there's some type of environmental liability that the company is somehow understating. But let's not get too complicated right now. I'll do a bunch of videos on that. But what, when the when the market value or the market cap is below the book value, the book equity, that's the market just saying, hey, we're calling your bluff. Something here doesn't smell right. Something here isn't worth what you say it's worth. And I just realized that I'm out of time, and I will continue this in the next video.